Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So I saw this on CCN, Bitcoin price significantly outperforming the S&P 500 in December. And I'm not going to read the article for you guys, I'll link it in the description. But I thought this was pretty telling, you know. Uh, we look at the S&P, wow, look at that. Look at that dip from the S&P 500. It rebound a little bit yesterday, Boxing Day, but um, it's in a free fall. Uh, this isn't Bitcoin, but this is XRP, and as we can see, the entirety of 2018 was basically a bear market, as we all know. And so now economists are stating, in fact, that Bitcoin price uh, significantly outperforming the S&P 500, but just in December. So we're only going to look at December here, and sure enough, it outperformed the S&P. Uh, then I went to Twitter, saw uh, Hodor's post here. He did post a new blog. Very interesting stuff. He does talk about uh, the both economies. It's called A Tale of Two Economies. Here, I'm going to just read a little bit for you. We are fortunate the overall stock market is correcting now, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average shedding roughly 3,000 points in 21 days. The financial pundits on mainstream media have provided a number of reasons for the decline, most notably the current government shutdown that's taken place over the holidays. However, December's precipitous decline was just the latest since the market reached its all-time high in early October. And so guys, if you go back here, uh, early October was here. We, we saw a double peak for the S&P 500. Sellers lost confidence. Uh, we saw ginormous sell-offs here, and then finally, just over the last uh, couple of days, few days here since uh, December 13th or so, 14th, 7th, okay, so, ba well, yeah, this is basically the month of December so far, and so we saw a giant sell-off over the last uh, few days. Let me continue this. And it signals that a bear market might be ahead for those that own traditional securities and financial instruments. The crypto market, by contrast, has already faced its own music in 2018 and now has immense compressed energy, much like a coiled spring that has been pushed down to its minimum space. So again, you know, you look at the S&P, right? And you look how much. So guys, like I'm, I'm zooming out here and... We basically, the last crash we had was in 2008. Uh, there was an avalanche here. 2007, 2008, there was an avalanche here, a sell-off. And then by early 2009, we, saw, we started seeing momentum. So it's been almost 10 years of upward momentum for the stock market. Hodar talks about the Dow Jones, but uh, if you look at the charts, uh, they, they, they look relatively the same. And so by contrast, when you look at cryptocurrencies and of course, um, all the crypto charts pretty much look the same. There was a huge, you know, there was a bit of an uptrend, uh, 2017. Actually, let me go to, let me go to Bitcoin because Bitcoin actually does show you a little better than this because Bitcoin uh, did see uh, somewhat of a rally 2017 and then not until fall 2017, we saw a huge, huge move up for Bitcoin and all the altcoins. And then basically 2018 was an entire bear year where we just saw downward momentum the entire year. So it's very interesting to compare and contrast the two. Uh, one has had basically 10 years of upward momentum and um, in crypto, we know crypto is not as mature as some other markets, but over the last 12 month period in cryptocurrencies, we've seen uh, a decline. And so these two markets, as Hodor is pointing out here, um, are at very different stages in their cycle. Even while the crypto market was shrinking, however, the large investors, so this is very important, the large investors and financial companies knew better and were pouring massive, massive capital into new platforms and services to cater to crypto cur curious investors. Crypto curious. Stuttgart's crypto exchange in Germany is one of the most high profile examples of this trend. And so back in August 2018, this came out. Germ Germany's second largest stock exchange unveils cryptocurrency services suite. So just a little background on that. So in addition, these traditional players, ordinary crypto investors continued to fund ICOs whose sole purpose was to create new crypto trading platforms. This optimism in the face of 2018's market downturn speaks to the recognition by those with clear insight into the immense value represented by the innovation of crypto assets. Citizens of the world now have a censorship resistant choice for personal finance one that is decentralized, relies on no central authority, and can cross borders as easily as a weather system. That's a very, I like that analogy, can cross borders as easily as a weather system. Every cryptocurrency has access to at least one use case by definition, a unit of stored value. Yes, this use case has proved incredibly volatile since crypto was first traded, but crypto assets continue to make forward progress, regularly taking three steps forward and two steps back. And of course, we are making progress in this field, but guys, 
This is still a field that is in its infancy. We still have uh, hurdles to jump in order to get this thing off the ground. Governments are working at it. Uh, G20 summits, you know, they're talking about cryptocurrencies. We're making our way forward. It's just going to be a matter of time at this point. And so another reason for those of you, uh, you know, who think you can make a quick buck off this thing, I hear you and I feel your pain, but at the same time, you know, I'm not a financial advisor, so do your own research, but putting more money into this than you can afford to, I don't even want to say than you can afford to lose at this point, than you can afford to keep locked up for X amount of years. And that X could be three, could be five. And so if you've put in five grand into cryptocurrency and you cannot have it that five grand locked up for five years or because you might need it for something in the meantime, don't invest it or you shouldn't have invested it because this thing takes time. It is not a get rich quick scheme. So the recent trend has seen the crypto market throw its support squarely behind the one crypto asset with a trillion dollar potential as a bridge currency in addition to its imminent use by banks as regulatory clarity sharpens into focus. Other use cases have suddenly taken the stage alongside cross-border value transfer, propelling XRP to an increased market share as Bitcoin's luster continues to fade. Utility-driven demand has taken center stage and all eyes are on XRP. I love how Hodar ends his blogs. This guy is eloquent. So shout outs to Hodar for the blog. Thanks so much for keeping us motivated. Personally, I'm curious how uh, we're going to see all this play out. Uh, will the stock market can continue to go down? Uh, we saw, again, a little bit of a rebound here. That doesn't look very, very promising. However, uh, you never know. Anything can happen. And cryptocurrencies, you know, we've seen a year of declines. Lots are saying, including myself, that this is the year that we're going to see some really amazing things in this space. But I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.